So anyway, review of the Tesla Model 3. So if you don't know, it's been a uh, an odd year this year. Um, I my 2020 Model 3 that I had since it was three months old and uh, 11 or 1200 miles. Really, kids, come on, no blinker. got uh, hit in March. Uh, Walmart parking lot, 17 year old on his phone. Uh, it's backing out of his face. He whacked into my rear end. Ended up totaling the car. Uh, pros and cons on everything in life. Um, sad to see the, uh, the Tesla get totaled. I love that car. It was such a great car. Actually, as a vehicle, it was a great vehicle. Um, had so few problems with it. Um, that it just was incredible. It, was, it had run out of factory warranty. The only thing really that I had after warranty that I had to get done to it was the uh, frunk, the latch release, had uh, quit releasing, if you will. So I had to get that changed. That was like 400 bucks. And uh, I had a rock hit the windshield and it also hit the leading edge of the glass roof and that cracked the glass roof. Uh, so that had to get changed and that was like $1,200. Uh, I turned it in for insurance for the glass claim anyway, but uh, with a thousand dollar deductible, they paid like $200 for the roof. But anyway, or I had to pay. I would never have turned that in, but I thought it was a glass claim. Anyway, so that was really about the only problem. And tires, I mean, tires are kind of a normal thing. I had put on, actually I just put on like in December, a fresh set of tires. So that was only two sets of tires, I think in the whole time. I had about 70,000 miles on it, 60 or 70. Can't remember now. But it had been a great vehicle. I would have bought another new Tesla Model 3 uh, I would be driving blue on the outside with the white interior, but Tesla doesn't let you transfer the full self-driving. So even though you bought it, it's a software upgrade, um, and the way they do it is it's attached to the vehicle. Now, I can see pros and cons on everything. I can understand why they did that, or why they do that, but problem is if the car gets totaled why can't you just transfer that to a new one if you buy a new one or if you trade it in especially if you would trade that vehicle into Tesla you know just let me get the full self-driving upgrade because I've already paid for it well, that's not how it works so that in mind and with the new $7,500 tax credit again available uh, it would have actually made the car very reasonable for a new base Model 3 again um, because I would have been able to get that tax credit but again if the tax credit had been instant that would have helped buying the car but you know you have to take it off your taxes wherever you get it back at the end of the year but so I had a little interim car uh, while the car was you know at the body shop and their insurance was trying to figure out what they were going to do with it and uh, um, I bought a little Fiat 500. Dear God, what a mistake that was. It was in Barth. It actually was a stick. It was it was fun. But um, I've got it at Carvana. I actually have good things to say about Carvana. Their uh, warranty and everything is actually really, really nice. Um, the only bad part about, not Carvana, but about that particular Fiat was that there is no Fiat dealer here in Pensacola. And the climate control had automatic climate control. And it would never regulate itself. Um, it would get too cold in the car and it would never like cycle and cycle on and off the compressor to adjust itself. And so it would keep just running the compressor so much that it would freeze up. And then it'd become a block of ice, the coil inside would become a block of ice, and um, you'd have to turn off the compressor manually on the system, keep driving, let it thaw for about 10 minutes, and then you know, keep the blower on high, and then all of a sudden you would feel
feel it thawing and then all of a sudden the compressor was clear again or the coil was clear and you can turn it back on which again in about 15 minutes would freeze over so they could never figure out that problem that their warranties through silver rock i think was the name of it it's actually a good warranty company it was pretty easy to work with um but firestone is one of their authorized mechanics um so i had taken it there several times i had rental cars during that time one of them happened to be a new model three blue with black interior uh, i rented it at the airport um, no big I had my charger at home and everything, so I can charge it up. Um, but it didn't have full self-driving. And driving a uh, Tesla without full self-driving, when you're very used to full self-driving, is a very different experience. It's a very different vehicle experience. So, uh, finally got, uh, I mean, I had the Fiat. So, I, was, I took it to a Fiat dealer out in Crestview. Um... They finally, after two or three visits, figured out it's got to be the main motherboard computer thing, the climate control. But that part's discontinued. It was a 2013, and this is 2023, and yep, it was discontinued. So they couldn't get a new one. They, the, the uh, warranty people did authorize getting a used one. They put it in, still same problem. But when I was out picking it up, they had on the uh, lot a, uh, I think it was a 2018 blue Maserati Ghibli with a cream interior. Beautiful car. I'm like, oh, man, I can't afford that. And uh, then I looked it up online like the next day, and I was like, oh, holy crap. That was like 28 grand. I was like, well, that's kind of in my territory of pricing. So um, now I kind of had the Ghibli on my head. I never knew what a Ghibli was. I never had really, I mean, I knew what a Maserati was. Let's see if the camera stays where it is. Oh, it did. Good. Um, you know, I knew Maserati. I didn't really know a lot about them or anything. But I realized that that was a beautiful car. And I'm like, wow. And, you know, they depreciate a lot in the first couple of years. So I was like, hmm. So I was done trying to fix the Fiat. It was like, this car's got to go. And I'm still waiting for State Farm to finish. Um, Dude, oh, fuck me. Trash truck, and a, oh, I hate auto start stop. Trash truck, and then a popo. Great. So I'm be behind that now on my trip to work. Um, so anyway, uh, I was just kind of done trying to fix the Fiat. I was like, I gotta trade this in on a real car once uh, insurance pays off the other car to free up the credit. So, uh, they finally got all the ducks in a row and uh, insurance and everybody and um, now I was kind of on a, a, a Ghibli kick, a Maserati kick I'm like, well shit, those are affordable so at the Maserati dealer in Pensacola they happen to have a uh, 2020 same year as my Tesla, 2020 Maserati Ghibli uh, Grigio, gray on the outside, gray metallic, with black leather, and it was a certified pre-owned, so it had always been taken care of by Maserati, it actually came out of Fort Lauderdale Ferrari, uh, Ferrari Maserati down there, they had used it as a uh, loaner car, and that's how she started her life, and it was 42 grand, I'm like, well, it's on the high side, a little bit more than a new Tesla would have been. But Tesla wouldn't let me transfer full self-driving. So, kind of fell in love with it. Uh, got everything going. It's just we had to wait for that final payoff on the Tesla so that um, the bank could go ahead and write the, uh, <laughs> the mortgage for the car. Uh, and there's flashy lights up here. So, anyway, got the Tesla paid off. Uh, got everything approved. Got into the uh, Maserati Ghibli 2020. Uh, the S, so it's 424 horsepower, a twin turbo Ferrari built uh, engine, uh, three liter. It is very fun. Um, it's about the same size as the Model 3 was. Um, probably a little bit more power, a little slower, obviously, because it's just a, a internal combustion. Even with the twin turbos, the sun is right in my face. Um, uh oh, something's going on here. Two of the share of cars. Oh, I got a, a 
SUV pulled over. Alright, anyway. Uh, you can see the lights behind me. So anyway, got into it. So my overall rating of the Tesla, very good. But would I, I would have bought another one. But Elon kind of shot himself in the foot. And apparently this is, you know, a lot of people that have bought full self-driving or driving it wanted to upgrade to a new car, but they don't want to pay for that full self-driving again, which is at the time when I got this was 15,000. They've dropped it to 12 grand now, but 12 grand on top of 38 grand made that 50, don't make me do math like that. No, I'm pushing 50, 51. And I'm like, uh, and without the instant 7,500 off, if I could have gotten this 7,500, you know, instant tax credit, I probably would have gone ahead and done it. But I don't know. That's only half the price of the full self-driving. And it's a big difference. The full self-driving is not true autonomous driving. But this is this this Maserati Ghibli has the advanced uh, lane assist and the lane keeping and everything. So on the highway, it'll keep you in your lane. It works very similar to basic autopilot in a Tesla. Um, it's not nearly as advanced as Tesla's system is. Even the basic autopilot is way more advanced than the system in here. Um, but. You know, it's just like, eh, and I, so once I drove this and everything, I'm like, you know, this is a pretty damn nice car. And I was just like, uh, Tesla or the Maserati, brand new or two-year-old certified pre-owned. Anyway, you can tell, uh, if you notice the interior, this is what I went for. Um, but I wish Tesla would just, you know, if you total the car, if you trade it into Tesla, transfer the full self-driving. Um, so they lost a sale because I couldn't transfer the full self-driving. And I was also kind of waiting for the updated Model 3 to come out, which still isn't released here in the United States yet. And that was for March, and we're in October now. I'm assuming that's going to start rolling out here in the, the last quarter of the year. Um, they'll probably start updating the new Model 3 here, but they've got it in China and uh, I think some places in Europe. But um, it looks sweet, very nice. But this car is just gorgeous. See, the styling on the outside, the interior is beautiful. Um, so I switched to a uh, back to a gas vehicle, an ICE vehicle, whatever you want to call it. Maintenance on this thing is way higher than the Tesla ever was. Uh, I've already had to change the front brakes because it was at its three-year service appointment you got to service them every year so on its three-year part of the uh, uh, service for a Ferrari engine for the Maserati is change spark plugs and coil packs well at the best price I could find them on and I don't know if I'm saying that website right but Scuderia Scuderia I don't know it's out of uh, Great Britain um, or the UK and uh, but through them I got all those parts I got two new filters air filters and uh, um, and front and rear brake pads. They're Brembo brakes because this is the S, so it does have the upgraded brakes. Brembo brakes are very easy to change, too. The pads are super easy. So, um, did all that work on the car. Um, got that done. Uh, just debating which way I want to go. I guess I'll go right. Um, so, but I never spent that much on maintenance on the Tesla. So everybody's like, well, how does it compare to the Tesla? Prices, or you know, uh, costs and everything. So maintenance wise, it is definitely higher than a Tesla. Um, that's not hard to do. Any ICE vehicle is gonna be higher maintenance costs than a Tesla because you need to change your oil. Oh, I did buy the prepaid oil package too, so they did change the oil too. So, um, and an oil change on this thing, I think it takes eight or nine quarts, and it's a 10W60 racing oil. They changed uh, from a 10W40, and I think 18 or 19, so the newer ones have got um, the 10W60, which I've never even heard of, but it's a racing oil. So the oil change alone, just to do an oil change on this car, um, is about four or 500 bucks with the filter and the oil and everything, and then labor. So 
I prepaid those though when I got the car. Um, maintenance way higher than the Tesla. Driving experience, again, there's differences. Some good, some bad. Um, you know, the Tesla is ultra, ultra quiet. This thing, if you put it in sport mode, it, uh, oops, there's active valves on the exhaust. And yeah, this is just in standard, you can hear it a little bit. It's a beautiful sound. Sport mode is even better, but I don't want to flip the phone off the dashboard. I don't have it mounted. Um, the Tesla was ultra silent. Beautiful, instant power. Very fun car to drive. This is, is, this is kind of an elevated driving experience. It's definitely a luxury sports car. That's how they kind of describe it. Um, the Tesla seats are the most comfortable seats I've ever sat in. Um, I think Rolls Royce has a little bit more softer seats, uh, more comfortable, but for a regular vehicle, you know, that most people can afford, uh, those Tesla seats were amazingly comfortable. But, road trip. So besides full self-driving, the other thing is, is I, I'm from Kansas City, so traveling from the Panhandle of Florida to Kansas City on a road trip, I love to do road trips. I was going to do a road trip in this uh, for Labor Day, but um, a lady hit me in Foley when I was going to lunch. She sideswiped me, so I had to take this to the body shop. I'm like, dear God, stop. But anyway, but I wanted to be able to go to the road trip cutting up through the middle of Missouri and it kind of does a zigzag diagonally across, but going through the Ozark Mountains and everything. I haven't been able to do that route uh, because there's no charging anywhere in there. Uh, even Tesla, with the best charging network in the world, um, I couldn't go that route. So I've had to, you know, basically go up through St. Louis or come around, go up through Springfield and stay on major highways, which highways are fine, they're just boring. I wanna drive, I wanna drive through the mountains, it's kind of a windy roads. So it's just a nice, interesting drive instead of just drive on the highway, how boring. So I was really looking forward to that in a non-electric vehicle. And that being said, last road trip I did in the Tesla um, to Kansas City, it was Christmas time, um, I was trying to use my adapter on the CCS network then and using um, the different chargers that the other electric vehicles have to use. I have no idea how anybody would be brave enough to go on a road trip in a non-Tesla EV. Uh-uh. There was a couple of points that I trusted that the next charger I was going to be able to get to, like a, uh, um, not charge point, uh, uh, Electrify America, the blue ones. Oh my freaking God. Um, those are so unreliable. Um, and I talked to a couple. I saw a Mercedes, um, I don't know, one of those Jelly Bean Mercedes electrics. And they get free charging at those chargers. And um, I was chit-chatting with them. And I saw another one um, that was the Audi. I think maybe an Audi e-tron. And I'm like, wow. Oh, no, it was a Lucid Air. I saw a Lucid Air. And I'm like, God, I don't know how you guys can do it. I said, how has your experience been charged? And I'm like, you know, it's kind of hit and miss and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, wow. And I said, I'm, this is the last non-Tesla charger I'm using because I got jacked. Because I, on my road trip, uh, there was another, there was a charge point charger at a, a Piggly Wiggly gas, or a grocery store. And uh, they were like 60 amp. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, I can get there, and then I'll get, this is outside of St. Louis, I'll get to the next supercharger then. Well, I get to the, uh, I think it was charge point. I get there, they have two of the uh, DC fast, faster chargers. They were only like um, 60 or 100 uh, watt or amp, whatever they are. That. And uh, it's like, ee, and it's okay, because the fastest I can charge anyway on the, the basic Model 3 was 150 kilowatt, kilowatt, sorry. Um, but I was like, eh, I just, you know, 30 minutes, whatever, get a charge and get to the next Tesla charger. So I get there, two, two of the chargers, there's a guy in a Volkswagen, uh, ID4, the one that has been around for a while here in the States. And, uh, he was having an issue and I pull up to the other charger and I 
try the card and then try the app because it's not just a plug it in and Tesla reads it that it's your car and then it bills you. Oh no, no, no. That's how it works on a Tesla charger. Literally, you pull up, find the charger. Usually, all of them are working. Occasionally, you might have a Tesla charger down, but usually somebody drapes the cord over the top, signifying it's out. But it tells you on the screen how many chargers are available, if there's any broken. This is all on the Tesla screen. It doesn't do that for the third party chargers. But I get there and I can't get the thing to connect. It won't communicate. And they have a level two charger there too, which is the really slow poke one that you just plug in overnight at home and to charge up. Uh, so I finally, and this guy was close to home, so he was just gonna, he just went ahead and went home. He thinks he's, he had enough to get home. I'm like, wow. But so I plug into one of the slow chargers and call charge point. And they're like, oh, well, we've notified the owner that there's an issue. I'm like, I need charge. I'm on a road trip to get to my next stop. So I'm like, I had to wait there two hours for the trickle charger to get me barely enough charge to get to the next Tesla charger. The next Tesla charger is actually behind me. I had to backtrack an hour to get to that charger because I would have had to wait there three three or four hours on the slow trickle charger to get enough to get to the next charger. So it was a tit for tat. Do I want to backtrack and then charge or do I want to wait and just sit there at a grocery store that I don't need any groceries um, and wait? And I'm like, oh my God. And you know, this is getting close to the end of the road trip. So I'm like, you get anxious. I'm like, I just want to go to my hotel. I want to crash. So, because my plan was to get to the hotel about seven or eight. Oh no, I ended up getting to the hotel about midnight because of the failed third party chargers. And I should have just stuck with the Tesla chargers. So I learned my lesson. And I, I, I did not rely on those chargers anymore. If I happened to see one that was on my way and wanted to try it, I would do that. But I was I was always had enough to get to the next Tesla charger. And uh, so Tesla does make it easier on a road trip. It still delays you on your road trip because there's one leg in Missouri coming up through Springfield area. Um, this was the last time I'd gone up that I had to charge up because I had the smallest battery pack. I was just in the base Model 3. I had to fully charge to 100% to have enough power to get to the next charging, next Tesla charger. So from 10 or 15% or even 5% to that 80, 90%, which is what you're normally charging to, is not that bad. 20, 25 minutes maybe, real time. But to get from that 90% to 100%, that last little 10%, um, because the way the battery charges is it slows down, the fuller it gets. That took another hour from 90 to um, the 100%, almost an hour. So I was at that charging station for about an hour and a half charging. Oh my God. I was like, uh, so ready to be done with that one. So I was so anxious to take a road trip in an ICE vehicle again. And unfortunately I haven't done it yet because the lady had hit me. So I got the car back out of the shop. They still got to replace the front wheel because they tried refinishing it and it's not, it just wasn't perfect. It had bubbles in it and the color was off a little bit. So they just ordered me a new wheel from Maserati. So I got a new wheel coming. They had to change that tire because her wheel dug into me when she sideswiped me. Um, they still got issues with the paint. Uh, you know, there's a couple of quality issues with that and they're going to have to repaint the hood because that turned out not appropriate. The car was beautiful before. It had, you know, nice glossy shine everywhere. And they will again. The body shop's good that I'm working with, so they'll take care of it. I'm not worried about that. Um, but it's just been a pain in the butt. So hopefully I'll be able to get up to Kansas City again this winter. I'm so excited to take a road trip in a non-electric vehicle again um, and be able to cut through the middle of Missouri. And uh, so that's what's it. So would I buy a Tesla again? I would especially if somehow they came up with a program where, hey, 
you bought full self-driving before, if you buy a new car, a new Tesla, we will give it to you for half price or full price. And, and indeed, then when I would get rid of this, I would definitely go back to a Model 3. Um, but if they never do that, it's kind of like, man. We are still very early in the EV adoption. So, um, I'm early to work, so I'm just gonna pull in a parking lot. Um, we're still really early in um, the EV world. It seems like EV sales are starting to drop off. It is interesting now, and, and this happened like, I don't know, two weeks after I had bought uh, this car. I'll just park here. This happened about two weeks after I bought this car, um, where uh, Tesla finally said, hey, if you trade in your car, if you trade in your old Tesla with full self-driving, uh, we're gonna give you amnesty, which is a weird term to use, but you'll transfer it to the new car. It's like, hmm. Of course, that was announced after I'd already had paperwork. I think I already made my first payment on this. And I'm like, really, guys, really? Because I wouldn't have been able to trade it in because it got totaled, so I don't know how that would have worked. But um, that could have gotten me into a new Tesla. So if you're going to buy an EV and you're looking at the EV, wait until at least, I guess, next year. Once all, almost everybody, I think, now has uh, um, uh, agreed to use the, the NACS uh, standard for chargers, the Tesla charger. Um, I don't know how that's going to work because the, the Tesla chargers, if you don't back all the way into the space appropriately, there's barely enough length on those cables to hit the charge port because that's what they're designed for. They're all in the exact same spot on a Tesla. The problem with Chevys and with Mercedes and with Audi and with Volkswagen and everybody, they're all in different places. And God forbid the F-150 um, is up front. So would I buy another Tesla? I would. Um, that's Tracy. Um, but right now, I love the Maserati. I don't see trading it in anywhere in the near future, and hopefully I can get it to last for a while. So that's it. Ciao, guys. Ciao, bella. That's, that's as much as you get. But anyway, have a great one. I will talk to you later.